Hello, welcome to this third video and final video, hopefully, in the uh, series on ratio and root test. In the first video, we introduced the two tests and did some very easy examples. In the second video, we did three medium type examples. And in this video, the job is to look at two difficult examples. First up, we have n factorial who is squared, and that's on top of 2n quantity factorial. And our job is to decide whether it converges or diverges diverges uses using the uh, ratio test when you see factorials go with the ratio test <coughs> the very first thing you should do to simplify things that numerator of n factorial squared you should treat that as if it's basically two copies of n factorial so you should basically uh let's call that just n factorial and n factorial because we know how to handle them separately when they're together it can get really confusing in the ratio test, your job is to divide a sub n plus 1 by a sub n and take the absolute value. What you're looking at is the ratio of successive terms. One term divided by the previous term. And so what we're doing then is it looks a mess if you try to write it out. Absolutely a mess. And so instead of writing that, I want you to consider the following. When you see a series that you want to do the ratio test on take note of how many terms there are so in our altered version we have three different terms so we then go write out three different fractions replacing the ends with n plus ones wherever they are numerator versus denominator um, be careful with the 2n quantity factorial when you replace n with n plus one it's 2n plus two you got to distribute but still all inside the parentheses with a factorial on it so these are the n plus 1 terms. What happens with the a sub n terms is they get reciprocated. So they end up opposite of where they were originally. Underneath the n fa plus 1 factorial, we have an n factorial. And another one underneath the second one there. On top of the 2n plus 2 quantity factorial, we'll have a 2n factorial. Okay. The next action we take is breaking apart these factorials. We take off one term and... The rest is then going to have a factorial on it. n plus 1 factorial, the quantity of n plus 1 with a factorial on it, is written as n plus 1 times n factorial. It's like saying 5 factorial is 5 times 4 factorial. And in doing that, that allows us to be able to cancel. And again, now with the 2n plus 2 quantity factorial, we take off a 2n plus 2, we take off a 2n plus 1, and then we're down to 2n factorial. Sometimes you might have to take off more than one term until you get down. It's like having 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. And now we can cancel. What is left over after all of this? An n plus 1, another n plus 1 on top of a... Ooh, that should not say that. Sorry about that. It should say 2n plus 2. 2 and 2n plus 1. What happens as n goes to infinity on that? Ultimately, it's a quadratic over a quadratic. The degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator. And so the ratio of the leading terms is, is the re resulting limit. You'll have an n squared as the leading term in the numerator, but a 4n squared as the leading term in the denominator. We don't have to multiply those out. We just, we just take that as a fact. So one-fourth is your answer, which is less than one. And you then respond that the original series is convergent by the ratio test. Okay? Not very easy. I wouldn't even call it medium. That was kind of difficult. And then here's the most difficult of all. Here's listed as example seven. N factorial, that's innocent. It's the N to the N term. Boy, that term. Because your job is to replace the Ns with N plus 1s. And so, it's, it's N plus 1. And then it's raised to the N plus 1. But instead of writing that, we don't, we don't really want to write that fraction. What we want to do is go back to the original, give each term its own fraction, replace the Ns with N plus 1s where they are in the fraction. So n plus 1 factorial as the numerator of one fraction and n plus 1 quantity raised to the n plus 1 as the denominator in another fraction. 
And what happens with the original a sub n terms is they get reciprocated. And so underneath the n plus 1 fa quantity factorial is an n factorial. On top of the n plus 1 quantity to the n plus 1 is, is, is an n to the n. And we can look at these two separately. We know what to do with the factorial. We just saw it in the last example. We're going to take off n plus 1 and have n factorial. We kind of know what to do with the, the exponent on the denominator there, n plus 1 to the n plus 1. We could break it up and have n plus 1 to the n times n plus 1. So that's the action we take algebraically to simplify this limit. It allows us to cancel the n factorials, and then in a very strange way, this usually doesn't happen. Usually these fractions, they exist in their separate own little worlds, and they don't interact. But here we have an n plus 1 as the numerator of the left fraction, and an n plus 1 as the denominator on the right fraction. So we can cancel. And what are we left with? We're left with n to the n on top of n plus 1 to the n, the quantity to the n. And we can write that as the entire fraction raised to the nth power. And where do we go from here? The inside's going to 1, the exponent's going to infinity. It's, it's an indeterminate form to power. And uh, there's, there's uh, one way to do it, which is a shortcut, and there's a longer way which is what the shortcut is based off of. Now, I'm going to show you the shortcut way here. This is very much like a, a famous limit that we have. And so it's not in a quite the right format for us to see it yet, though. The first thing we're going to do with this is flip it. Okay, if you have A over B and it's raised to the C, then you can flip it and call it B over A and then raise to the minus C. Then raise to the negative 1 power and flip it. Why would we want to do that? Well, what it allows us to be able to do is have one term in the denominator and multiple terms in the numerator. And what that allows us to do is break it up. n divided by n plus 1 divided by n. So 1 plus 1 over n. And that whole thing is raised to the negative n. Hopefully it looks a little bit more familiar. We have a uh, a few classes ago, shown how if you have 1 plus m over n, and that's raised to the kn, and you're taking the limit as n goes to infinity, that's e to the mk. This is what we're looking at. The value of m is 1. The value of k is negative 1. This limit, then, must be e to the 1 times negative 1, or e to the negative 1. Better thought of as 1 over e. we got to decide the size of this guy because if you're between 0 and 1 you converge but if you're bigger than 1 you diverge we need to know where this fits at so it's better to write it as 1 over e you know e is about 3 2.71 1 divided by 2.71 for sure that is less than 1 this series is convergent by the ratio test okay all right, great. That ends this video. That ends the series of videos on the ratio and root test. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm here to help you through this. Um, please like and subscribe. Comment down below, whatever you like, um, and I'll see you in the next video.